I hope you're ready, because it's about to get hot. <laughs> Why did I even do that? Hello, my fellow sorcerers, and welcome to this fresh hell that is playing the best worst class in season one. I mean, worst statistically, sure, but best in our hearts and still the most fun, at least to me. And, well, that has been proven true through my journey so far, and especially once the build I'm about to share came online and I started absolutely annihilating everything really kind of suspiciously easy so this is my kind of best sort of transitional build basically you want to be using this and swapping to it around level 40 to do the nightmare capstone and uh, then all the way to sort of 65 where there's a few ways you can go and evolve it or change to do the capstone for torment and in that kind of slice of meantime, you will feel like a god. Which is not something I ever expected to say on Sorcerer. It does ridiculous damage in terms of speed farming, speed XP. It is unbeatable. You can simply run through everything, drop the firewall, which is the core, or should I say mastery, of this setup, and just let everything turn to ashes behind you as you you continue on your merry way. It works shockingly well thanks to uh, both Malignant Hearts and some new aspects in Season 1, and I really am quite pleased, because of course Firewall used to be fine for leveling, and it was like the 7th-ish best build at Endgame, nothing special, but it's seriously been given some love, and it is stronger than I ever could have expected it to be, and I'm really excited to show you guys just exactly how and why and I mean more than anything you are so tanky and hard to kill with this setup I, I know on a sorcerer enjoy it while you can because we will eventually run hurt first into the brick wall that is deeper torment but for now you can take a hit from a skeletal bow and not die Okay, yes, that's kind of normal at this stage of the game, but still, it's nice to see one and not fear for my life. Anyway then, let's actually get into this with what's happening, why it's happening, and how it's happening. And yes, as you've been seeing, it has a little bit of an icy uh, frozen orb twist, which really pushes it over the edge. Oh, and it doesn't hurt that this doesn't run out of mana either 95% of the time, which is something that is really impressive to be able to say about an early game sorcerer build. And I guess if I really want to hammer the point home here, this is me clearing level 55 enemies malignant tunnels as a level 42 just after I unlocked Nightmare and started at playing around in it. It's not, you know, effortless, but the fact it's working as well as it is, is really testament to its strength and it's only gotten so much better since. So without further ado, let's tackle the skill tree. Over in our basics then, we don't actually need any of them, I've just kind of been trained to only ever get Firebolt for the enchantment, so, you know, this is where my two points have gone, but we're not using the enchantment, we are moving straight on to the core skills. One rank in Fireball as our first enchantment slot, and we take it all the way to Greater, as obviously we're doing a lot of the Bernie, and this does affect the Fireball pops from dying enemies in a big way. We don't need any extra ranks because this adds enough damage by itself and we need the skill points elsewhere. And that sorts us out lovely here. Then we get our second enchantment slot immediately after in Frozen Orb. Frozen Orb itself was buffed fairly decently a while back, and indeed more recently, the chance for it to actually fire from the enchantment was also increased, making it very reliable. But why do we weave it in here? Well, for a couple reasons. Firstly, it's an extra source of vulnerable as we take it to greater. Frost Nova has a long cooldown. We don't 
don't have cooldown reduction at this stage, and indeed it's nerfed anyway, and we don't have access to all the aspects we could need, again because it's earlier on. So this helps bridge the gap while you're waiting 20 seconds for more Frost Novas and keeps up that exponentially increased damage from Vulnerable. It also is extra freezes on enemies, and more importantly than anything, it is frost damage, which will become very important. And just, you know, it does a lot of damage. It adds much needed burst to a build that is otherwise all about killing enemies quickly, yes, but over time still. It really does add that balancing element that makes it just Oh. Then over to our defensives, where, yes, we are still trapped in the eternal realm of just get all of them, all of the time! And, well, we do. Flame shield to the usual shimmering as our emergency button, then we get teleport to, again, the usual shimmering to have that damage reduction, but more importantly, the ability to go fast, and indeed, even beyond that, this is our source of lightning damage, which, again, is important, and you might already know why, because of a certain heart by the name of Tel Rashes. Then we get our ice armor, we don't need the mana regen, so we can save a point there, but the extra defensive is nice, and more than that, we just want as many cooldowns to press all of the time. You then get your Frost Nova, of course, and take it to Vulnerable as our biggest and best source of Vulnerable. Then we go down here and grab Precision Magic for that Lucky Hit boost. We can't get a lot of Lucky Hit from gear at this stage, replacing it very quickly anyway, so this gives us a nice base level increase to make our Lucky Hit synergies actually happen. Then we get some big defensiveness from the buffed mana shield and then protection too as we are spamming cooldowns as often as we can. So to the main event we put everything in firewall and then we get mages for that extra burn time as enemies have a really annoying habit of running away from the fire. I don't know what's wrong with them personally and we don't need the mana regen here as it's not too reliable. Then we get an extra 9% damage on our firewall. We will essentially always be healthy in this build, and indeed, Crippling Flames is absolutely key. As soon as they get immobilized, they will start taking massively increased damage, both from our aspect and one of our hearts, so this happening as often as possible is just so good. And again, being healthy doubles it, and we will always be healthy. So, our ultimate of choice, as you might guess, is Inferno, primarily for the infinite mana while Supreme is on. Not only does this let you spam it for no cost, it lets your mana refill completely while you do so to then have a fresh tank to go again. And yes, the damage, the pull-in, and the low cooldown is just nice for an ultimate. Then we get Fiery Surge, this was buffed to be 45% over 30% at max level, and you really feel it now. This really keeps you topped up, and it's great to have while uh, leveling, or at least at this kind of middle stage where you've sort of finished leveling, but you're still progressing towards the actual end game that is Torment. Then Endless Pyre to stack the burning damage up on bosses or tanky elites, this helps out there. And then Warmth. This really is felt, and it walks, goes a long way to both making this build very tanky, but also making sure you keep healthy for your Crippling Flames and Inner Flames. The key passive of choice here, well, it's not Combustion. The damage increase is just not worth it, and even if you do have Burning from Free Sources, and pretty much we just burn from Firewall, yes, technically Inferno, and technically uh, Flame Shield, but that's not consistent or worth it, the damage here just isn't great. Sadly, this really needs a tune-up. So indeed, we get Shatter, and this works out surprisingly well. So we freeze an enemy, they die, they explode with Shatter damage, they also then explode with Fireball enchant damage, and that creates some delicious chain reactions of death across the screen, and you will enjoy the fiery, frosty fireworks as you walk through any dungeon. Even Nightmare as I'm doing that are a big 
big bump above you immediately after unlocking Nightmare Dungeons. I know it's nothing crazy, but it's still really good to be able to do this so effectively, so instantly. And we will be getting extra freezes from Frozen Orbs being spammed out, which will then go towards more Shatters too, so that works its way in and helps it out. That then is that with your 58 points at level 50 and it's all quite nicely put together, at least in my humble opinion. So then when it comes to actually piloting it, I mean it's as usual, use your ice armor when you need a little bit of extra survivability, keep your enemies frostnovered and vulnerable, teleport to, you know, speed through the dungeon and onto packs of enemies so you can start dropping firewalls, and uh, then the flame shield whenever you need a little bit of serious emergency help. Now you may notice I do have Frozen Orb here, that's not actually you know, part of uh, the setup, it's to demonstrate why the Frozen Orb enchantment is so good and actually better than just using Frozen Orb. See, Frozen Orb, when you launch it, goes straight past enemies. It will do the entirety of its travel time and end up behind them. That's not really that useful. Whereas when you get a Frozen Orb from the uh, free one that can happen from the enchantment, it will stop on the enemy that it went for. This guy here, in this case, not a great example because it's targeting enemies a million miles away. Why? In any case, please, just, just, just do one nice and close so I could prove the point. That would be, that'd be really cool. Where are you going? So anyway, as you can see, when you cast it on the enchantment, it will stop right on top of the enemy instead of going past them, which really compounds the damage and makes the whole thing worthwhile. I'm really pleased with how this kind of fiery, icy combo has come together, and what it actually enables us to do with a certain few synergies and hearts. Other than that, it's very kind of simple and basic and straightforward. Put your firewalls on enemies and then move away. You want to kind of set up a sort of star pattern as you move around, so uh, wherever they run, they stay in the field of fire, and nine firewalls is the sweet spot for damage that will stack all together, as they do indeed, of course, stack on one target, so that's what you're going for on bosses, for example. And while we mention bosses, if you know you're about to do a single target boss, then it is worth actually swapping the firewall enchant for the fireball. The fireball won't won't help on the boss, whereas the firewall will, and you might as well get that little extra damage in, if you can remember, if you can be bothered, though it's certainly not necessary. And then when it comes to maintaining your mana, well, that's coming from a few places, but as we are running uh, prodigies, that means all of our cooldowns do give us mana, so you will just be pretty much spamming them most of the time to keep yourself topped up. And as a final, perhaps most important tip when playing firewall, don't overdo it. What I mean is, it's very easy to find yourself dropping firewall after firewall after firewall, waiting for the pack of enemies to die, whereas they're already dead. One, two firewalls will kill most anything outside of the tankiest of elites with bad affixes on them, so you are fine to just drop a couple down and then move on. Yes, if you need loot or anything like that, wait around, but you will be surprised how much a single firewall goes when it comes to clearing what you're currently fighting. Drop a couple and then leave and you'll find this flows much quicker than if you just stand around repeatedly placing firewalls until everything's dead because a lot of the time that is a waste of both mana and time and leads to massive overkill. And on that note then, let's actually talk aspects and then eventually hearts. Oh, and gems wise, just shove whatever you have in. Obviously, damage over time is good and health is good, but at this stage it doesn't really matter too much. So, as I said, we have uh, prodigies for that mana on cooldown. We also want to get the buffed uh, incendiary aspect for the chance to restore mana while burning. The thing is here that the five key core aspects of this build all come from the codex. 
three from dungeons and two from the seasonal journey so you will just naturally get them all then on your necklace specifically we do want aspect of control that is why a crippling flames immobilizing is so good obviously the frost nova damage it's nerfed yes but it's still a big bump that we can't ignore especially at this stage when our options are more limited then we want to actually go for two new aspects in the codex thanks to season one the first being uh, searing wards after spending 200 mana your next firewall is free this will actually go a long way to keeping you in mana yes getting a 100 roll would be you know a lot better but the codex really does help and actually the missile destroying is useful too this is this here represented and you can tell when you're going to get the next free one a lot of the time you can deliberately just cast firewall at nothing so you then stack up the free one now it's glowing then go into the boss fight with both full mana and a free firewall so you can get an extra cast as like a little min max but yeah it really does come in handy then we have this the frozen orbit frozen orb stays in place and pulses for more damage this is what lets you use frozen orb and the enchantment without it it's kind of really terrible but thankfully this is now in the codex and that's really good for us you'll get it fairly early on and it will let you transition to this much smoother without needing to hard find this aspect so past uh, the codex ones what else have i added on here well nothing else is required the build works and is powerful and will take you all the way to uh, torment approaching with just those five however if you can get uh, engulfing flames you should put it on it's not a great aspect in most situations but at the moment it does kind of kick into gear and help you finish off uh, some injured enemies and that's really nice to to see you also want to go for something like damage while you have a barrier or more vulnerable damage with a barrier that's what i would have on here if i had either of them actually accessed ideally on your helmet you want frost blitz but if you can get heal per closest enemy this will help you stay healthy to power your healthy passives then on your legs you want disobedience also from the codex just to keep you as tanky as possible and then yes i have found three copies of esu's heirloom which you might think is lucky but i want a different unique please this isn't necessary you don't need it i've just put it on because i have it you can have this as any utility you feel like extra lucky hit with a barrier would be my choice but whatever you feel you want nothing here is required and uh, that is uh, that when it comes to aspects so let's talk malignant hearts then in uh, one of your three slots you want the vicious heart that is tell rasher for each unique element you deal damage with you deal 10 percent more damage for eight seconds at least that's my role but you can see the ranges this is really good that stacks up to 30 percent damage and you do feel it that is why the frozen orb is so good we obviously get fire from the fire we get the ice from the frozen orb and we get the lightning from teleport all three of those things happen often enough that this is permanently active and that's a permanent huge increase then we get probably the best defensive uh, bonus we could ever ask for as a sorcerer this is the uh, brutal heart of revenge this one you can only get on nightmare tier so you'll have to wait till you do unlock it to get hold of it but it is definitely worth uh, focusing it as soon as you can so you will take 10 to 20 percent less damage i am sad at my low roll and that damage will instead be converted into uh, a pool that will be spent and exploded up to a massive hit when you press a defensive and this is perfect and i love it so much we always use all four of our defensives all of the time and we need help surviving it's just beautiful we stay alive we get to do bonus pops of damage every time we press our defensives and life is i was gonna say great 
better than it could have been, and I'm really thankful this exists. If I just stand here then, and let the damage taken on me actually stack up and up and up. Now, of course, you'll be pressing more often than this, but, you know, just to have a nice extreme example, and I suppose that will about do it. Boom! It's really, really good. Yes, it's not going to one-shot everything, of course, but just getting that free extra pop of also fire damage, so it does trigger your other Talrash's heart, is so nice on top of the defensive increase. Lastly, then, we have the reason that Firewall is the best build right now in Season 1 for Sorcerer. It is this Wrathful Heart, Creeping Death. This is huge, and it has pushed uh, this uh, spell over the edge. You deal percent more damage over time for every crowd control effect. So if they're both immobilized from crippling flames and are frozen, and eventually they'll also be stunned if we can get Raiment of the Infinite, you will be doing colossally more damage to them with Firewall. That already is good enough, but then if the enemy is unstoppable or a staggered boss, you do absolutely bonkers amount of extra damage. This turns the negative fix on Nightmare Dungeons, where enemies become unstoppable at 30% health left, into a bonus for Firewall Sorcerer, because it just means you execute them as soon as they do, thanks to this heart. I really cannot stress enough how much of a damage increase this is, and you can get this on World Tier 2, and it is obviously a little bit rarer, because it is raffle, but once you complete the seasonal story, you can get raffle hearts really easily and we have a guide up on the channel on how to get them early really easily too so farming it shouldn't be too bad so that's kind of that then the frost the fire the lightning all work together to boost your damage you get burst from frozen orb huge melt from firewall you're really hard to kill from all the healing and tankiness we've got going on the clear speed is through the roof and it's just comfortable easy to play and right now at least right now life is pretty good for sorcerer in season one and it's supposed to be getting a lot better next week when we get to see the buffs they have planned for us that they have confirmed, which gives me a lot of hope and why I've been fairly chipper throughout this build video. If you are wondering about actual affixes, you're going to be changing gear a lot, so it's not like you're just going to sit on some, but mana cost reduction and any mana helping ones are nice. Cooldown reduction is, of course, the best to get anywhere. Vulnerable damage after that, crit doesn't really matter, and then lucky hit chance followed by all the generic damage increases that you might want. Definitely use a wand and focus, just for the increased attack speed and the innate lucky hit and the innate cooldown reduction, if you can. Obviously still use a staff if it's a sufficient item power bump, but that's ideal. And then let's have a quick little bob over to the Paragon board for when you initially get there, as I have. I've only literally just started, but if you're also around here, yes, take this path up, get the non-physical damage, it is huge, and get it here too two, and in my first glyph I have gone for Enchanter, because it's the best of what I have. This is the second best choice possible, just non-physical damage in general is a really huge deal for us, and amping it is very much worthwhile, but of course, ideally, your first one should be Adept, so your Firewall is 20% larger, and then enemies can stand in it longer, and that's just so good for this skill. Sadly, I've not had it drop yet, but pop that in if you do have it. If not, you want Enchanter. So, that is that then. Your current best sort of mid to early end gamey type nightmares to sort of looking at Torment Sorcerer build for you to be getting on with. And it's something fun, it's something I've not played with, and it's something powered by the Season 1 mechanics and new stuff, which is always fun too. Let me know what you think. Like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a oh god. Oh.
Why? Yeah. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye <laughs>